town of Easton, Massachusetts is governed by a board of selectmen, which is the executive branch of government, and also town meeting, which is the legislative branch of town government. The board of selectmen present things to town meeting, town meeting votes on those things, and the board of selectmen is charged with enacting what town meeting votes on. The Board of Selectmen, Selectmen themselves are a long-standing New England tradition. Interestingly, it's not a system you see outside of New England, but it's uh, the system that's operated in Easton forever. The Board of Selectmen are charged with enacting what's voted at town meeting, the Warren Articles that pass at town meeting. They're also the policy setters for the town of Easton. They also are in charge of hiring the town administrator who is in charge of running the town on a day-to-day -day basis. There are five members on the Easton Board of Selectmen, although other towns have different models. There are some towns who, uh, in which there's a three-member Board of Selectmen. Easton has a five-member board. Our terms for selectmen are three years, and a selectman can run again and again and again. There are no term limits in the town of Easton. They do not need to have a background in politics or any special degree. Some people go to the Board of Selectmen or run for the Board of Selectmen after service on other boards like the Finance Committee or the Schools Committee, but some people run for the Board of Selectmen without any previous experience in town government. The Board of Selectmen members are compensated $1,800 a year for their, for their time. The Board of Selectmen operates as a voting body and anything that's presented to them has to be discussed at a public meeting and voted on at a public meeting and that's how they reach their decisions. In the town of Easton the Board of Selectmen has the authority to hire the town administrator, uh, hire town council, hire the town accountant and hire the veterans agent. Uh, they're also responsible for appointing members to uh, other bodies in town, like the Planning Board, the Conservation Commission, the Historical Commission, all those, those commissions, once appointed, operate independently of the Board of Selectmen. They call a town meeting, they put warrant articles on the town meeting floor, and they present those warrant articles to town meeting for the town meeting members to vote on. The Board of Selectmen meetings always have a public participation period at the end where anyone can go and speak. Uh, there are other ways to reach out to the Board of Selectmen as well. You can contact the Board of Selectmen through the town web page. You can email them simultaneously. You can send a letter to Town Hall to reach the Board of Selectmen. It really depends on what the particular issue is, whether it's addressed at a public meeting or addressed by a member of the staff. So it really depends on the issue. The open meeting laws pertain to the Board of Selectmen and everyone else who works on a board or committee in Town Hall. And the open meeting law says that anything that's going to be voted on, the discussion has to take place at a public meeting and the vote has to take place at a public meeting. So that means for any board or commission, there can't be conversations behind the scenes. They can't have a whole email conversation about what they're going to vote on. They have to have the discussion and the vote at an open meeting. Now that doesn't mean that the Board of Selectmen can't go to a function and sit together or any other board. They're allowed to communicate with each other about day-to-day -day things. They're allowed to socialize together. What they are not allowed to do is get together or communicate by phone or email about a decision, come to a conclusion by phone or email or outside of a meeting and then vote on it. The discussion and the vote has to take place at a public meeting. The town administrator is essentially the chief executive officer of the town. He is charged with enacting what the Board of Selectmen tells him to do. The Board of Selectmen really can't be involved in day-to-day -day operations of the DPW and the police department and the town clerk's office. So they set goals and objectives for the town administrator. They set policies for town and then it's the town administrator's job to enact those policies and um, achieve those goals and objectives that are established for, for him. The Board of Selectmen is the town administrator's boss. They hire him, they have the ability to fire him or her, and uh, he's an employee of the Board of Selectmen. The town administrator is a paid position. Right now, Easton has about a $70 million budget, and the town administrator is charged with monitoring that budget and um, directing all the employees in town government. So yes, that is a paid position. Generally, town administrators have a master's in public administration, just like our current town administrator does. Uh, that's generally the base requirement for a town administrator. 
the budget cycle never really ends. Just when the budget is voted at the May town meeting, there, there begins discussions about next year's town meeting. But the official planning process actually begins in September when the budget subcommittee of the town sits down and starts to plan for next May's town meeting. The Board of Selectmen hires the town administrator and they have the right to fire the town administrator. The uh, Board of Selectmen is essentially the board of directors of the town. They're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the town and the town administrator is essentially the chief executive officer. He's charged with running the town on a day-to-day -day basis, managing the employees, make sure that the budget is handled correctly and overseeing everything that happens on the town side of government. A bond rating is a, uh, a descriptor of the financial situation in your community. The better the bond rating, the better the financial situation in your community. The worse the bond rating, the worse the financial situation in your community. Our bond rating right now is AA3, and uh, a bond rating goes up or down based on several factors, how much money you have in reserves, how your budgeting process is going, how much debt you have outside of Prop 2.5, all those things have an impact on the bond rating. Massachusetts state law governs many of the departments the town of Easton and every town has to have. The town is required to have a treasurer collector, there are laws governing that. They're required to have a town accountant, they're required to have a town clerk who's the keeper of the records, they're required to have a planning board, um, they're required to have, we're required to have a historical commission because we have a local historic district. Uh, we're required to have a police chief. There are laws governing most of the major departments. The three that really aren't required by law are the Council on Aging, the Rec Department, and the Library. There are no laws governing the uh, requirement to have those departments. The Board of Selectmen is the Chief Executive Board of Easton and Town Meeting is the Legislative Branch of Government. The property tax rate is actually set by the Board of Assessors. Uh, what the Board of Selectmen does is that they set the, the tax shift. Is it a single rate for residents and businesses or is it a different rate for residents and businesses? The Board of Assessors tax, sets the property tax rate every year. The Special Act Charter is a document that's been put, put together by a committee which is a proposed charter for the Town of Easton. Uh, that Special Act Charter is going to go before town meeting to be voted on and then to the voters for a vote and it proposes to change the government of the town of Easton from a board of selectmen town administrator to a town council town manager form of government in which there would no longer be town meeting. The public records law is a law that says that documents associated with town government have to be accessible to the public. That includes emails between government officials, any document produced at town hall. A citizen has the right to go into town hall and request those documents and the town has 10 days to comply with that public records request and produce the documents that were requested by the citizen. From time to time the Board of Selectmen does appoint advisory committees and that advisory committee is given a specific charge like the Fire House Study Committee. Uh, that, they're given a specific charge, they complete that charge, they report to the Board of Selectmen and that's the end of that advisory committee. Regular boards and committees, a lot of them are appointed by the Board of Selectmen and they have specific legal requirements that they need to meet, but they operate autonomously from the Board of Selectmen. They're given certain duties that they have to perform on their board or committee. Under state law, the town, every town is required to have an annual town meeting to set the budget for the town, and generally the town of Easton has that annual town meeting in May. Occasionally a town has to have a special town meeting or does have a special town meeting because things happen over the course of the year that need to be addressed and they can't all be addressed in one meeting. So uh, for the time I've lived here, Easton has had a special town meeting in the fall to address Warren articles that can't wait sometimes till the town meeting, uh, specific budget items that can't wait till the town meeting, and so it's not required by law, but many towns do have special town meetings. In the town of Easton, there needs to be 100 people at town meeting in order for the meeting to convene. If the town doesn't get the required amount of citizens to show up for town meeting, the town meeting can't take place. In addition, if people leave the meeting and someone rises and raises a point of no quorum, the meeting will actually be discontinued at that point and can't go forward with town business. The Board of Selectmen is the authority that calls town meeting and sets the date and time. 
the town meeting warrant articles are, a draft of the town meeting warrant articles are issued pretty far in advance of town meeting and discussed at the Board of Selectmen's meetings and those are available on the town website. The official warrant article uh, has to be released a specific time before town meeting and it's different depending on whether it's a special or an annual, but the draft is continuously discussed in the months leading up to the meeting. The rules of town meeting are that the town moderator, who is an elected official, is responsible for running town meeting. He's responsible, or she, for determining whether there's a quorum to hold town meeting. He or she uh, has to recognize speakers at town meeting. He or she is in charge of the processes at town meeting, so it's really the uh, town moderator who runs town meeting, and the rules governing town meeting are given out at the beginning of town meeting. A Warren article is really an agenda item on town meeting. So a warrant article can cover multiple topics for the placeholder on the town meeting warrant about a particular item that's going to be discussed. Warrant articles come from many different places. A warrant article can be submitted by citizens petition. A warrant article can be submitted by the planning board. A warrant article can be submitted by the board of selectmen. We've had warrant articles submitted by finance committee members. Anyone can submit a warrant article Ultimately, the Board of Selectmen can vote to include or not include those articles, but uh, with the exception of a citizen's petition, which has to be included if enough signatures have been collected. Every warrant article that's on the town meeting warrant is discussed well in advance of town meeting. For example, if it's a planning board article, the planning board has to have hearings about that warrant article before it goes to the Board of Selectmen and then on to town meeting. If it's something from the Conservation Commission, it has to be discussed at the Conservation Commission prior to going to the Board of Selectmen and then going on to the town meeting floor. If it's concerning the budget, the Finance Committee has to discuss every budget item before it goes to the Board of Selectmen or at the same time roughly before it goes on the town meeting warrant. So every warrant article that appears on the town meeting warrant has been discussed in its appropriate board at length before it goes on the warrant. The way a citizen could read about that is they could either go to the meetings concerning that warrant article, every meeting's open to the public, they could read the minutes of those meetings on the town meeting website, every board meeting minutes are on the town meeting website so they could read those minutes. They could call the specific part department and ask about that article so there are ways to learn about those articles well in advance of town meeting. So Prop 2.5 is a law that was passed in 1980 that limits the amount that a town can raise property taxes to 2.5%. And the budget as a whole for the town of Easton, a portion of it comes from taxes, a portion of it comes from the state, a portion comes from local fees like excise tax, but the portion that comes from property taxes is the portion that's affected by Proposition 2.5. Every year, the town estimates the town figures out how much they collected and then the next year they add two and a half percent to that and that's how much they can collect the next year. They can never go up more than two and a half percent. That's what Prop two and a half is. The Prop two and a half law allows a community to decide whether they'd like to go up more than two and a half percent in a given year. So the Board of Selectmen is the only board that can propose an override and what it does is it allows the community to override that two and a half percent. The Board of Selectmen has the right to put that before the voters with a majority vote for an operational override or a two-thirds vote for a debt exclusion override and then the voters get to decide whether they want to raise their property taxes for a specific reason more than two and a half percent in a given year. Under Massachusetts state law the ballot question has to specifically state where the money is going to be spent and it has to be spent in accordance with the ballot question. There are two different types of overrides. One is an operational override which allows the town to raise the property tax over two and a half percent in a given year and then every year after that two and a half percent is added onto that new number. There's also a debt exclusion override and those types of overrides are for huge or significant capital items like a new school, a new pumper truck, it's a temporary tax increase. You'd see a line on your tax bill for that particular item, and it lasts for a certain number of years, and then it falls off. So if it's an item that's going to last 10 years, it lasts for 10 years. The school building projects, it was a 20-year bond, so that tax increase exists for 20 years and then falls off of your tax bill. Those are the two different types of overrides.